Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. You're watching yet another episode of Engine Room, a podcast by Token Metrics. My name is Dylan Love. I'm the managing editor of cryptocurrency research firm Token Metrics, and I'm joined by our market analyst intern, Jacob Coach Gallup. Jacob, happy days to you. Yeah, happy Monday, Dylan. Uh, it's already been quite the Monday for crypto news. Uh, so I'm sure you've already seen that there was some fake news circulating this morning about Litecoin being accepted by Walmart at the corporate level as a means of payment. But as it turns out, this was all just a scam. Uh, somebody put out a fake press release and a bunch of publications uh, immediately printed it as news. Litecoin soared about 25% this morning, but as, uh, as we're learning... This was all fake. Talk to us about how it's fake, Jacob. What did they do to make it work? Yeah, so they had created a fake press release through the press release service Globe Newswire. Um, and they ha made up a bunch of quotes from the CEO, Doug McMillan, talking about the acceptance of Litecoin at Walmart. Um, then the verified Litecoin Twitter account tweeted out the link to that uh, press release from Globe Newswire. So it seemed very legit. Like you said, after this happened, a bunch of news services were picking this up. Walmart, Walmart did, in fact, however, post a job for a cryptocurrency expert to work at its corporate headquarters. So it was a great link, a, a great kind of scam because they just had this information. So it seemed like it could be legit. However, it turns out the announcement was fake. A Walmart spokesperson came out and confirmed that Walmart is not accepting Litecoin and the Litecoin Twitter account deleted its tweet. Um, and Litecoin had surged from about $180 to $220 after the announcement came out that it was fake and went all the way back down to $178. I want to so read, read a quick, I want to read a quick list of publications that got scammed by this fake news. Coindesk, Decrypt, Blockworks, CNBC, Reuters, Zero Hedge, and even Bloomberg Terminal. Wow. Uh, it's kind of impressive what a fake press release can do. This was wh whoever's behind this. They did, a, they did a really good job of lying to everybody. Yeah. And so, I mean, it's, it's, I'm sure they sold at the top once it, they, it was just a pump and dump for them to, to kind of sell their bags or, or sell sell their Litecoin. It's also interesting that they chose Litecoin because um, Litecoin isn't in the top five market cap. It's it's an older coin. It's not, I, I'm, I, I don't think it's proof of stake. So it's interesting that they chose Litecoin over other cryptocurrencies. Yeah, more, I, more I, one thought I had, what, what, what makes this piece of fake news actually kind of credible is that of course, Walmart would want to work with a founder and a team instead of Bitcoin, which isn't really owned by anybody. So there is a lot of credibility there. And furthermore, uh, in, in I think it was June, uh, Litecoin even released smart contract functionality. So okay. this was a really well done con job. I'm kind of impressed by all of this. Yeah, yeah, definitely. At any rate, yeah, this, this makes me think back to, um, I forget how long ago it was, but when these people compromised a bunch of notable Twitter people's uh, accounts saying, if you send up, whatever you send us in Bitcoin will be doubled and it worked. Uh, they had somehow gotten into Elon Musk's account and a number of other notable celebrities. Uh, yeah, man, crazy times. It's just a nice, real, a nice little reminder that you should never trust and always, always verify. Yeah. I mean, in that case, my way of verifying would be to go to Bloomberg, go to CNBC yeah. and see if it's legit. And that it was there. So, I mean, yeah, it, well, it makes sense. Perhaps the most troubling component to this little piece of, of fake news was that it was actually tweeted by the verified Litecoin account. And so yeah. I, put, I put on my little thinking hat about how is this possible? And I think what it was, was whoever's running that Twitter account, some Litecoin employee running that Twitter account, they saw the news and thought, uh-oh, I didn't know about this. I better get the word out because I run the official Litecoin Twitter. Yeah. That, that tweet is, of course, since deleted, but holy crap, man. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Well, also what I find interesting, this is also a similar pump and dump. Not exactly, but... Um, I guess it's not a pump and dump, but it's more a buy the rumor, sell the news is um, Cardano's ADA token. So on... Um, this past Sunday, yesterday, 
Um, they launched their long awaited Alonzo upgrade, which enables the smart contract functionality and allows developers to build decentralized applications on Cardano's platform. And I mean, this people have been waiting for this for years. It's been in their roadmap. It's gotten pushed back over and over and over. And I mean, I guess it's, it's, it is a buy the rumor, sell the news. Uh, Cardano plunged about 10%, um, to two dollars and forty cents in the past twenty four hours, um, and I mean, it, it's it's also right now we're experiencing a crypto market sell off, so that is one one aspect of it. But I mean, when we saw the last sell off last week, um, we saw Solana Solana went up, even though when everything else was going down, Solana was going up. Yes. Yeah, so, so what's interesting is that on our la- the the last sell out. The- What's interesting is the last sell off a week ago, Solana went off. Solana went up while the rest of the crypto market was going down. And even though this long awaited smart contract Alonzo released for Cardano, the, the crypto market's going down and it also went down. So it, it is a, your traditional buy the rumor, sell the news. And I think in the long run, Cardano, it's going to help out Cardano's price. It's going to help out the Cardano platform. With that in mind, Jacob, what else is worth covering on this Monday? Yeah, so I had mentioned the Sneaky Vampire Syndicate on one of our group podcasts last week. I've been following this NFT collection, this NFT drop, because it one the, the main artist was one of the artists from the Board Ape Yacht Club. So it definitely has a lot of hype around it. Um, before the release, there was about 35,000 people in the Discord, 25,000 followers on Twitter, and there was only 8,888 vampires being released. So the release date was yesterday, and it was a, a very interesting kind of mint minting process because they used a different um, kind of system in order to avoid gas wars and um, and bots minting the NFTs. So what they did is they allowed investors to connect their wallets and then register to purchase an NFT and not mint it yet, but just to register, you had to solve a challenge. So I I did try minting it. And the challenge was uh, type out 12. It said one to the the number 12, but you had Mm -hmm. to type it out T-W-E-L-V-E. I'm not going to lie. The first time I did it, I just typed in one, two, because I was, I was confused, but, but yeah, that was the anti-bot system. And then uh, you had to wait 30 minutes to see if you reserved a spot. And if you did, you had four hours to be able to mint your NFT. And this was to avoid crazy gas fees. If all 5,000 people were minting their um, vampire NFTs at the same time, which I think went really well. They said about there's about 5,000 owners. So it is a, uh, is spread out a lot more. There was no whales being able to buy 50 uh, vampire NFTs. And the minting price was uh, 0.08 ETH or around $260. And right now the floor for them is 0.91 ETH or $2,900. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's super interesting that literally within two hours, you were able to, what, 10X your money spend to that almost 300 including fees on a vampire and then sell it for 3000 and they haven't even been released yet you don't even know which one you got you just know mm-hmm. the number so it, it, it's it's interesting to see that the the nft craze yeah what do you think from your armchair appraisal of things uh, jacob are we in an nft bubble or is this is this normal for nfts and always will be normal I think we are definitely in a bubble, but I don't see the bubble bursting anytime soon. I think there's so much hype around it. And that's kind of what I've been following this because um, if you're a subscriber, you get access, a subscriber to token metrics through our um, website, through our uh, services, you get access to our uh, weekly, our daily newsletters. And one of those is the NFT roundup, which I do weekly. Um, that's a great piece of information to really s- learn more about um, NFT news, see what see what's happening in the, the volume of projects, et cetera. So, so token metrics does give a lot of information, a lot of great research. So it's definitely worth the time, worth the money to look into being a subscriber to token metrics and, and really getting access to our, our wealth of information. Yeah. Uh, if we're going to plug company stuff, speaking of a wealth yeah. of information, now seems like a great time to mention that our book is out and it's ready for you to either buy on Amazon, or you can just go ahead and download the thing for free. 
uh, do a little Google for crypto investing guide, how to invest in Bitcoin, DeFi, NFTs, and more. The whole premise behind this book is that it takes you from being crypto curious and maybe knowing a couple of things to actually knowing how to use MetaMask and trade crypto profitably. Um, it really tries to cover every single corner of what it means to trade crypto. Uh, so yeah, stay with us. We are trying to demystify crypto as best we can. Lots of noise and misinformation out there, as we mentioned earlier in the podcast. But uh, at any rate, we pride ourselves on helping you sort signal from noise. Uh, yep. And this podcast, Engine Room, is just one of the ways that we do that. And uh, I, I think now sounds like a good time to say goodbye to everybody. So yep. thank you, Jacob, for joining us as he does every Monday. We'll see you Wednesday for the group podcast and Friday for a one-on-one -on -one interview with the Token Metrics employee. This is Dylan. This has been another episode of the Engine Room Podcast. Thanks for listening. Bye -bye.